Ecamm will take you. I never heard of that one. No worries. What's going on, everybody? We are live. It is Monday. We are back. We missed last Monday. We took some time off to kind of regroup, get things refreshed and uh, ready for the next push in 2022. I'm um, excited to be back with you guys live here on YouTube tonight. We were having some diff technical difficulties, but we make it work. Sometimes you just have technical difficulties. We all have it, even the best of us. Been doing this live stream thing for a while and uh We'll figure out the technical stuff after. We'll do the troubleshooting because that's part of live streaming is troubleshooting too. You try to prevent issues, but sometimes technology gets the best of you. Um, good to see you guys here in the chat. Y'all are here early today. Maybe maybe y'all missed me last week. Cyrus, good to see you. Darius, Ahmed, Lady Spa One, Michael, good to see all of you guys here. Uh, are you giving it uh, away for free? No freebies today. No freebies today. I do. I did ask my sponsors, not sponsors, but some of the companies that send me stuff. I've started to ask them for two. One for me to actually do product reviews and share with you guys on YouTube and Amazon, but then also to do giveaways. So I'm working on some stuff for you guys. So just make sure you keep showing up here on Mondays um, and we'll talk about that. So uh, <laughs> drone. So I'm just saying possibility uh what's going on chris stone good to see you carmelita's here good to see you here as well it is monday y'all we are back at it uh one of my favorite topics about video that's what we're going to be focused on today um now my guest today it, i social media is amazing all right sometimes you just scroll through your feed and you just see something that stands out and the, my guest tonight, I was literally scrolling down Facebook. I don't know how we connected. We Y'all know, Facebook friends. We all Facebook friends with everybody and half the people we never even talked to. But this particular gentleman, I scrolled down and I was like, his picture quality is like on point. And it was on Facebook. Now, y'all know a lot of Facebook live streams and videos are grainy. They don't look all that good. They're not worth stopping for. But I literally like stopped the scroll. He made me stop the scroll because of the quality of his video. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, would you like to be on the show? Because I need you to talk about video and how you leverage it. And because he's not just a techie, but he does some things outside of this digital tech teaching space. So if you're in a different industry and it's not technology related, make sure you stay tuned all the way through. Um, tag someone that is in a different industry that is not technology based that needs to learn how to do this video thing, how to show up and the importance of it. Cause that's what we're going to be talking about today on this show. Ramonica's even here. Good to see you, Ramonica. I owe you a call. I'm sure. Um, let's get in in into this today. So I got my special guest on here. His name is Mr. Earl Hall. What is going on, sir? Glad you took the time out to jump on here with me and talk tonight. 
Hey, Monty, so glad. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to our conversation and um, seeing what we can do to, to get some people on video some more. Yeah, man. I, let me let you introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, what do you do, why do you do it, who do you do it for, and we're going to get started into this awesome topic tonight about why every entrepreneur should be using video. Let's go. Well, awesome, man. Um, thanks so much once again. Um, Earl Hall is my name. Website, earlhallstudio.com, where I talk about things content creation related, um, mostly from a very simple perspective. Uh, basically, the tagline on the website is, all you need is a mic, a camera, and a solution to a problem. And I boil it all the way down to, look, you can use this because it's got a camera and a microphone on it. All you need to bring is your solution to the problem of the type of clientele that you're trying to handle. So that's kind of the, the in and outs of it. And then I do content creation. I'm chief marketing officer for AJC and uh, where we help financial services professionals get clients and we promote using video. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, y'all, if you have questions, make sure you line them up tonight for sure. Um, like I said, I was scrolling through Facebook and saw the quality of your video, and it just stood out because there's not a lot, unless you're like a just a fanboy of just technology, you know, then you're starting to go get all this equipment. What got you into video and the level up? Because I, I haven't seen anything other than what I've seen, the quality of your videos now. So mm. what got you into video? Did you did you get into this level up thing or were you just like, let me just start uh, coming out the gate with uh, all this high end equipment that just looks crispy on camera? Oh, no, by no means. Um, I started off once again with a cell phone, doing live streams on YouTube with my cell phone. At the time, I think I was using a Samsung. You know, now, of course, I use the iPhone is what I use today. Exactly. Yeah. The iPhone club is in the house, but <laughs> I started off with just my cell phone and using what I had. And that's what I really want people to get accustomed to. It's not about the, so much the gear. I think what you mentioned about being a fanboy of gear, I think a lot of us are, and I'm definitely one that like shiny objects and, and leveling up as you call it. But you see people that can have the best of gear but have no, they can't produce content in a way that will engage people. Mm -hmm. And it is always about the content. I mean, if you want to level up, you can. There's always ways to level up. But do you need to spend a ton of money just to get going? No, I've never believed that at all. I probably for a moment did believe that you wanted to just go ahead and get the best that you can. But let's just be real. We don't even have the best that you can have. Right. It's, you know, so it's like whatever it is that you have, start there and don't ever let the gear, don't ever let the gear be the excuse mm -hmm. for you not starting with what you already have in your hand. Because let's just be real, Monty, these cameras on these phones today, especially the back cameras, man, yeah. please. Yeah. You get some yeah. amazing images and pictures and videos with these cameras today because these phones are all about the cameras. So just start where you are. And if you want to get good at something, just get good at talking to that camera lens and producing content that people are going to want to engage with. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. your audience is going to tell you whether or not they want to engage with you mm -hmm. based on the type of response you're getting, the views you're getting, the likes, the comments and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, so sometimes it just comes down to asking your audience what it is that they want, because half the time people don't even notice a difference in picture quality, even sound quality to some extent. I think mm -hmm. because we do what we do, we just pick it up readily. But most of the general population, if you want to call it that, they're not even really concerned with that. We are. Yeah. But most yeah. of the time, they're not. Yeah. We just needed to look look clean and just yeah. sound clean. Just as long as you don't sound mm -hmm. like you're just like way over here somewhere. There you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. as long as the picture is not like super grainy, you know, we, we just need to be able to see you and hear you. Um, yeah. But like you said, you know, some those of us that are in it all the time, we're looking at, you know, name brand microphones where, like yeah, you said, yeah. I've used another microphone that was unheard of and nobody seemed to complain about the audio. They, oh, that sounds good yeah. to me. So, yeah, that's nobody even person. cares. Yeah. Yeah. But but let's be real. Let's switch gears. Let's be real. You know, if you do look mm -hmm. a little bit better than the average person that shows up, you do get a little bit more attention. Um, one of the things I noticed about your was the like the video itself. It was just like really, mm -hmm. really clear. What made you go from 
iPhone per se, Samsung to using a like a a a consumer professional type of camera. Mm -hmm. Just the interest. I was interested in it. I wanted to level up um, with sound as well as with video. It's just something that I personally wanted to do. Um, but again, people just need to start. But I mean, when you get into purchasing the different gear that's out here, because you can you can get lost sometimes in the weeds and spend so much time just picking out gear that you never do what actually needs to be done, mm -hmm. which is create the content. Yep. That's the thing that has to happen over and above the gear. The the creating of the content is is key. Yeah, yeah. I um like we were jump talking about um before we went live how I just mm -hmm. uh picked up the roadcaster to really create more content. Like I'm big on yep. workflow um because one of my roadblocks was having to switch out stuff all the time. Um mm -hmm. do you do you have a, a strategies cuz we're talking about why every entrepreneur knew is to create more content, more video yeah. content. Do you have strategies that you've used that allow you to create more videos versus, hey, I'm going to create a video, but you always find something that kind of makes you not actually create it? Well, one of the things that I do is in whatever industry I'm servicing, I want to have a clear understanding of what the problems are in that industry that that potential prospect is having. I want to understand intimately and understand the language that they speak so that when I speak, I'm speaking the language that they're accustomed to hearing. And since I'm making lists, basically, I just make a list and you can call them titles for videos or whatever, how to dot, 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 three best ways to dot, 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 those types of videos that are just really honing in on the problem and then showing that there is a solution. Mm -hmm. And so you could just open up a notepad or whatever, you get out a piece of paper and a pen and just start writing down the problems in that industry that you're trying to service. If, and it doesn't matter who that, who that industry, what that industry is, what matters is, do you understand that industry? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what these people are struggling with and going through? You know, that's why we service financial services professionals at AJC, because I used to be a life insurance agent. Actually, I'm still licensed in, in multiple states. So I've sat in their seat. I know what they deal with each and every day. Um, so it's, it's just important if you want to have a, a certain workflow, if you're getting stuck, all you need is a pen and a piece of paper and just writing down the problems in that industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love And produce that. content around it. And it doesn't have to be five hour long content. It could yeah. be a short three minute video that is just expressing something that they need to know. Yeah. I, I keep a list of like videos I need to create, you know, around mm -hmm. questions that people are asking. I'm like, okay, I'll right. just create a video on this, I create a video on this, and I let the let the viewers tell me, you know, what's the most important thing to them. Because anybody that's gotten stuck in content creation, I don't know what to create or I don't know, especially if you're just getting started, you know. I don't mm -hmm. know what to talk about when I show up on video. It's like <laughs> what questions are being asked in your industry and create videos around those. And don't think mm -hmm. that no any question is just too small because literally I've I've shared with some of my YouTube uh students, go search for how to cook rice just look at another number of views from videos titled how yeah. to cook rice speaking yeah. of youtube sir you're doing fairly well on youtube yourself you got a nice little audience over there sir well we've been doing okay for the past couple of years i think since about 2016 or 2017 yeah um, when you I get lost on youtube man you know what i don't even know how to answer that question monty, monty quite honestly it's like i was and still am i do voiceover that's what I serviced voiceover artists and was showing them how to get clients and how to build a business in voiceover. Right. And so I was so deep off into that, that I just wanted to share what I was learning. I just wanted to share what it is. And then that just really exploded over time. You know, it just exploded over time, even though I don't create videos, quote unquote, for that industry anymore. I'm cr creating videos, showing people how to create content. That audience is still responding to me. Um, you know, as far as with what I'm teaching now. So a little bit of it is I have to really build the audience I'm trying to build now and just have the patience to build that since I'm not doing that anymore and I want to switch over. So I just have the have to have the patience to do that. But 
I, I think all of the, the people that view my YouTube videos and there's, it's still growing, you know, yeah. it's just still growing. Yes. Yeah, that evergreen palace over there on YouTube. Oh yeah. It is evergreen. There's nothing like YouTube. Yeah. There is nothing like YouTube when it comes to where you should create content and build something because it, like you said, it's evergreen and people are always searching for those problems. Cause you just think about why we go to YouTube. Um, we want to, you know, we'll type in what's the, I think we got a technical issue over there. Do that. There we go. And what's what people miss when they're not sharing. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. We had a little mm -hmm. hiccup there on the internet. Oh, I think okay. We're back now. I think we're back now. Um, yeah. When I when I got started on YouTube, it was like going back to what you said was answering questions that were out there. Um, and even so now I, I went to saw one of your YouTube questions and or one of your YouTube uh, lives. I was on there. I was kind of I wasn't able to t type away in the chat, but I love the fact that you engage with people in the chat. Can you kind of talk about how you do that or, or why you do that and the importance of that when you show up on video? Oh, I think we still got some technical issues over there. All right. We'll see if we can get him back here in a second. All right. Let's see if we can fix some technical issues. Good to see y'all here, though. Good to see you. What was that? Uh, Billy, good to see you in there, sir. All right. We're going to see if we can reconnect him back here in a second, you guys. All kinds of good, fun technical issues tonight. There we go. I think we're back now. I, 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 you got to love live video, right? It's, it, it's, it's almost like if it doesn't mess up for a long time, you're almost just like, okay, <laughs> when is the day that you just want to act crazy every it's platform. gonna happen it's, it's, it's gonna, gonna happen. happen it's gonna happen just just yeah. plan for it um and know how to navigate through it uh, but we were talking about youtube um and i was asking around the question of i was i was uh watching one of your more recent youtube videos and mm -hmm. you really do engage with your live audience can you kind of walk through like what that looks like for your live streams like why do you engage what are you looking for when you engage mm -hmm. with the live audience because it's not just you just showing up and just talking it's you actually paying attention to what's going on in the video as well yeah and i mean i think that's what what it's all about especially on a live stream paying attention to what the people that have taken their time out to come and watch you i don't care and you probably notice if someone just says good morning earl i throw it up on the screen and i respond back to them because that's the only way to build an audience is by building a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not building that relationship, you know, because people have kind of quasi relationships with us already. They, they watch us all the time. They feel like they know us. And then it's almost like a slap in the face or an insult, especially on a live stream. If someone does say hello to me, I feel like it's a slap in their face if I don't say hello back. I'm a country yeah. boy. So that's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. Make sure I let me make sure I ain't miss nobody over here in my chat, uh, <laughs> Billy or Ramonica, because all of them would get me. David, I saw you, Chris. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call out Roz, and I don't even see Roz here because I know she'll get me if I don't call her out in the chat. But it is, it's amazing. Like, you literally can build community showing up through mm -hmm. video, and, and it's like you know someone. And over yeah. 2020, 2021, I felt like I've met and and know so many people even yeah. though i haven't physically seen them yet shout out to everybody that's coming to podfest and vidfest because it'll be my first in-person conference and i don't know how awesome. long but i get a chance to meet all these people i connected with especially like yeah. in my amazon live community that i feel like when i see them i'm already going to know them i just don't know how tall how much taller they are than me you know pretty much <laughs> that's the only thing but I, I know about like some of their families and like what do they like to do outside of showing up on social media and i think yeah. those of entrepreneurs that are in business it lets your customers kind of see what's going on too can you kind of walk through what it looks like for an entrepreneur like what do they get to really experience when you, you show up on video and create video? Are they just seeing a business or are they seeing 
maybe who they can potentially work with and be like that person i just feel like i like them and want to work with them well it could be either or i mean the reason that i have always created content is a dual purpose to build the community and then also to uh basically be able to offer them things in exchange for working one-on-one -on -one with me right and when you're looking at the the people that are coming on to your live streams or, or watching your videos if you if you do this over time what happens and i see this every single day where people have been watching me on video for months sometimes a year and a half or more and now they're working one-on-one -on -one with me the first thing that happens is is it like oh my gosh i can't believe i'm talking to you <laughs> like it's it's like it but i'm just i'm just earl but they've developed some sort of persona about who it is that I am. And, you know, it's kind of like they're, they're starstruck, you know, a little bit, you know, with that or have to just say, man, I've been watching you so long. I can't believe that I'm sitting here talking to you now. And, you know, cha-ching, they just take their credit card out and now we're in business, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you're producing, from, from my perspective, the reason to produce content is because some kind of way you want to generate revenue for your business. And the best way to generate that revenue is to have this marketing arm of whether it's a YouTube or a LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is, that's the marketing side of, of all of this. Because just think, you we go on Amazon and a lot of times before we buy something, we read a review. And we wanna get a consensus of what people are saying, some good, some bad. And then we make up our own mind what it is that we want to do. Well, the same thing happens with the content that we create. We're giving people to make a decision on if this is the person that I want to go with. There's so many different coaches, consultants, or whatever it is that you do um, that do the same thing that you do. But what we've discovered, and you may have heard this, Monty, uh, for a long time, people have said the person that, that, that spends the most money on advertising wins. Mm -hmm. And I think it's shifting. Especially, I mean, we, we can talk about the issues on Facebook or, or whatever and accounts getting shut down and all this other kind of stuff. But creating content, it's almost like, well, it's not almost. That is the thing that is going to be the entryway for so many. So the yeah. person that can create the best and the most and the most engaging and provide the best information and be consistent with what it is that they're doing, they're going to win. Yeah, It's yeah. just inevitable. Yeah, I agree with you so much on that. I kind of went on a rant there. so I'm Nah, that's a good that. rant. I don't even mind if you continue that <laughs> rant because that's one of the things I've been harping on recently myself is, mm -hmm. you know, the, the more you can show up in different formats of video, like the, mm -hmm. it's just like you're everywhere and people are just like, I'm going to, I need something to get a review. I need somebody to tell me if, whether or not I should get this or not. Like, yeah. so why not be the person that creates the content and just share your opinion on whether or not we should get it or not? You know, what do you yeah. like about it? What do you not like about it? And right. the more authentic people, they continue to get the the views because people just are like, man, I could just really trust that person. And we, it, it's so much different when you do show up on video and explain this versus a blog, you know, versus yeah. written format. It's like, I can see that. And one of the things that you were talking about, um, oh my gosh, I was going to hit uh, the celebrity thing. Oh my gosh. I have literally, mm -hmm. I did a, I did a install for a local church and the, the pastor's son came across one of my YouTube videos. As mm -hmm. he was watching the video, he had talked to his dad and his dad was like, yeah, I know him. And so he literally called me because he was a client of mine. He called me and he was like, hey, my son wants to talk to you. So I'm not thinking anything of it. OK, yeah. hey, how's it going? You know, what can I help you with? He's like, is this really Monty from YouTube? <laughs> like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> he was like, no, I don't have any questions. I just didn't believe my dad knew you. And it's, <laughs> it's those kind of things. You're just like, I just uploaded a video not thinking yeah. that. You know, all of a sudden, you know, people will be flocking to you. And the other yeah. part you hit, I hope y'all listen to it. It's a lot easier to get that credit card number when you show up on video. You're like, you can build that know, like, and trust so fast that people, they've already made the decision. Yeah. I won't get into the customer buying cycle, but, it, you know, if, if I don't know Earl and Earl offers me something, you know, today and we have never talked before, it's going to take me a little while to understand mm -hmm. whether or not I need to buy whatever Earl is, is exactly. offering. But if exactly. I've seen Earl on YouTube for the last six months and I keep following all his videos, when mm. I'm ready to buy, it's almost like effortless for Earl to, 
I'm probably going to reach out first and, and say, hey, I need yeah. your help because I've seen you do it so many times. Um, mm-hmm. Good to see all of y'all over here. Monica's saying facts over here. I saw something earlier. Um, Carmelita had said, did he mention he lost his channel? Do you want to talk about losing a YouTube channel, Earl? I don't know. If, we ain't talked about that before. Hey, I don't know if that's relevant to the conversation. Or well, not. no, it, no, it is. I mean, th- there's. I have actually lost a YouTube channel, but I don't think that's what that person actually meant um, because I have had a YouTube channel that got shut down and for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I think what I said earlier, just in regards to starting off in voiceover with that channel and building that channel, which is still growing, even though I've switched niches, if you want to call it that I went from just specifically talking about voiceover and how to build a voiceover business to now Focusing in more on how do entrepreneurs, whether they're voiceover artists, life insurance agents, it doesn't matter. How do you actually create content that will be of use to the audience that you want to service? What is the Mm -hmm. simplest way to get this done? And so I think that person was in, you can look and chat and see if that's actually, actually what they meant. But it's like when you switch an audience, it takes time to switch that audience Mm -hmm. because people have gotten accustomed to seeing you do one thing. And now you're doing something else. So you're going to you're going to have fall off. You're going to have people that, well, no, I don't want to follow anymore because that's not what he's talking about. And that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. If you know, that's fine. Everybody has their own option to to follow or or not to follow. And I've got the option of what it is that I want to talk about on my YouTube channel. But I have to live with the results that come from making that switch. Yeah. Yeah. And be willing to and be willing to roll with it because it's not an easy thing to do to switch what you're talking about on, yep. a, on a youtube channel you know that's yeah. not an easy task yeah because once you build up that audience they're used to seeing you for that subject and that's one yeah. of the things i ran into early on um creating youtube videos i was creating it for real estate professionals i was tailored towards mm. digital marketing for real estate professionals and so mm. i'm i was trying to learn youtube how often to post all that good stuff how to make a good youtube video but mm. then i created how to live stream for churches like right before everything shut down and that video just took off well i was was thinking like oh let me create these videos for real estate professionals not really understanding like my audience was really people that were trying to figure out how to live stream and so if i was to go back Mm -hmm. i would have just doubled and tripled down on that type of content and so now i know for my channel okay i need to focus on like live streaming and video and that's like the Mm -hmm. core of what that topic is and even now thinking about like a brand deal sponsorships. I want to put it on my main channel because it's already there, but I realized like, nope, I need to start a brand new channel for this topic because it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. This segment of people Mm -hmm. is going to be different, not necessarily trying to get 100,000 subscribers, but like really like going way back to what you said at the beginning, focusing on that person, like their needs. And so that audience is super specific there. Um, Every entrepreneur needs to create video um, and leverage video is one of the is the title you gave me. Um, mm-hmm. how, how can we do that, Earl? Like the practical side, it sounds easy. I mean, like we create a video, hit record and upload it. But none of us actually do that, Earl. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this conversation. How do we create yeah. videos like what do we, should we just live stream every day? Should we hit record and edit our videos? Well, should we? That's a, we that's do? an interesting thing. There's so many different ways you can tackle this. When I built my original YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Earl Hall Studio, I went live five days a week. I went five, for five, for maybe about two years, maybe almost three. I went live five days a week, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, no, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. I went live just to talk to my audience. And that's how the audience started building. I hit a thousand subscribers within like six months. But I hit like five, ten thousand 10,000 very, very quickly. Now we're almost at 15. It just started snowballing. But the thing about creating content, it's got to be what you can handle on the schedule that you can handle. But whatever it is that you do, the consistency has to be there. Like now, my YouTube channel, I only go live Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern. That's when, I'm, mm. that's when I go live. You know, so... That's it. It's called Behind the Mic uh, with Earl Hall. But it's on my YouTube channel slash Earl Hall Studio or whatever. Or you can just go to the website, um, earlhallstudio.com. Or what you can do to create content, which nobody does, is just this. Everybody takes selfies. But 
creating videos like this, or even if you're going to be on Instagram, so you want to create it, you know, uh, vertical as opposed to horizontal, just creating a video is so super easy at this point. It blows my mind that people don't do it more. And when you look at places like maybe even an Instagram or even like a, a TikTok where you don't have to be as polished depending on what it is that you're doing. It is just about picking up and just having a conversation. That's it. Can I tell you one of my biggest pet peeves though? Oh yeah. Tell me. Cause I have some myself. Let's see if, let's see if we got the same ones. <laughs> okay. So we, we hold our cell phone, right. And we're, we're, we're making our video and the camera lens, I can hold this up right here. Uh, the camera lens is that little slit. Yep. But we're all looking at the big picture. We're all looking at ourselves <laughs> in the picture, and you can tell that the, that you're they're not looking at me. Basically, mm -hmm. I don't know why that has always been a pet peeve of mine, but it just has been one of those. But th that little camera lens, that little slit, or whatever it is, that's what you need to focus on. So if you're going to make videos, make sure you're looking at the camera lens. Don't look at yourself yeah. um, in the big in the big picture of the camera. But it's too. It, it's really super simple to make videos. But I think the hard part is the hard part for people is the content and also what they look and sound like to themselves. Mm -hmm. And so if you've never created content before, you over criticize yourself. And so I tell people this, I tell clients this, let's get your first 10 videos out of the way. They're going to suck by the way, but let's get them out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then we can get down to, okay, now you can find your voice and you can find everything. But until you make that first video, until you press record, nothing happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and now i don't know how to drag people to do that and i, I don't know that anybody does I, because i think it's fear-based yeah you know in a lot of cases it's just about fear or people aren't going to like it or i'm going to look stupid or you don't know them people and they don't know you yeah yeah and they don't pay none of your bills <laughs> yeah, that's right that's right unless, unless they send you super chats on a weekly or part that's of your what membership I'm community about. when and that's what we were talking about last or uh, two weeks ago your your, your tribe you know mm. if those are the people i'll listen to more so like oh okay maybe i gotta do something a little bit better or maybe i'm going on tangents to, during my videos okay they're mm -hmm. they're compensating me so we have some type of you know value exchange going on but yeah the, the rest of them uh, nah, I, I gotta, I gotta just be me. It, I was actually looking at one of my comments, and um, they were like, "You should have a hundred thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel." And I'm just, I'm in my own way. I'm just like, "Nah," I said. I said, "It's not there yet. It's not a hundred thousand subscribers yet, mm. but it's not gonna stop me from, you know, creating more content." I appreciate the comment, but I was just mm -hmm. like, "Nah, I don't even feel like it's, it's at where I needed to be yet." Um, but if I, if I keep criticizing myself too much then i won't create the content i'll spend way more time creating it you will and you will. i'm like man I'll, I'll never get it out and so I every last guys, one of us that has an audience we can all monty you can look back at the first video you ever created and be like i don't know why anybody followed mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. you know but all of us have those videos that are there and i don't i've never deleted old videos before no this is my progression this is how i got to where i am now I wasn't always here and there was a starting place and everybody has that starting place. But the first thing you have to do is press record. Yeah. That's in, it. In the chat, you guys let me know. Did you create a video? I'll say last week since it's Monday. Let me know. Give me a yes or give me a no. Did you create a video last week? I don't care which platform it's on. That's even better if you tell me what platform. Was it on YouTube? Was it on uh -huh. Facebook? Was it on Instagram, Amazon Live. I see Ramonica's in here because um, neither you or I, Earl, we we don't know how to kind of push people over that fear of getting on video. But if y'all have that issue, make sure you get with Ramonica, especially if you're a lady, because that's what she does, oh, cool. like camera confidence, like um, how to get over this fear, because she's been on Instagram mm -hmm. and TikToks and short, like Ramonica will just show up and just like, She's just going to be her. And that's kind of one of the reasons, like, I started to follow her. I was like, who is this lady? She is just her. <laughs> like, you're not going to tell her, like, to not be her. And she just shows up confidently the way she mm. shows up. And that's the way we all need to show up is, like, who are you? And just show up that way. Like, we all have people that are just going to resonate with us. Not everybody yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's going to be a certain subset of people that just love who you are when you show up. Um, 
and so I'm 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 loving seeing. Uh oh, I saw a no. I, I looked over and I saw a little no. Okay, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna get y'all. But I see a lot of yeses. Okay, a lot of yeses coming in here. That's creating content. But I think so. one of the biggest parts about it, you know, Monty is is really the consistency. It's like like I said, people now know that are following me. Okay, I show up on Friday 9 a.m. That's when mm -hmm. you can get me. Right. It, that's it. And that's manageable for me with all of the other content that I have to create for everything else that I do. Yeah. So I know that that's manageable for Earl Hall Studio to do that and be consistent behind it. I don't have to think about it. It's done. I know that that is going to be there. I'll already have like my thumbnail and everything ready to go um, a couple of days before I go live. So people know what I'm going to be talking about. It's scheduled. And I just get on camera and start talking. It's mm -hmm. like this is what we're talking about today. Yeah, and, and that that's the best way to do it. I found myself was like just having some type of schedule, and mm -hmm. that's why like for mine it's just Mondays at seven. That's when I go live. And if you're if you want the information or if I can be of value to you, this is the time I'm live. And and the, the also part about YouTube is if you can't make it live, the replay is gonna be here. So the replay is gonna be there. If yeah. you can't make it, the replay tomorrow, the replay is gonna be here like three months from now. So I don't care when you watch it. The information mm -hmm. is going to be here. I'm just a fan of platforms that allow the content to be easily found after the fact. So yeah. I can go back and reference it. Um, and platforms that allow you to be compensated to show up on, um, see, I'm over here critiquing myself in my mind. Y'all don't see, I'm gonna tell y'all a real story. Like right now, this is a training. I'm literally in my mind. I'm like, how many times have I said, um, during this live stream oh, like yeah. I, i'm in my yeah. mind like right now y'all like this is a real thing like just because you see us show up on video on a regular basis in my mind literally in real time i'm like how many times am i saying the word um but y'all might not have even picked up on it at all if some mm. of y'all didn't even pay no attention to it <laughs> y'all over like y'all dropping good information and content but this is one of those things that like we go through when showing up on video. Like I hit the record button. Like I, mm -hmm. I reach mm -hmm. out to Earl. I send him a message. Can you be on this live show? You want to talk about video? Got all the information built out the scenes and everything. And I'm over here stuck on how many times I didn't said the word. Um, come on, come on, Monty. You get, Earl, you have any things that like are your like hiccups, but you've gotten over them, or something that you still work through to show up on video? I know that there's common phrases that I say a lot. Because when I go back and watch the videos, I'm like, wow, I said that, I say that phrase all the time. And I don't even know why. It's like, I say the phrase, the whole nine yards. Mm. I don't know why I say that so much, but I know I say it a lot um, when I'm talking. It's like, yeah, you want to do this, you need to do this, and you're just going to get, it's going to be, you're going to get the whole nine yards. <laughs> you know, I don't even know if people understand what that term means, <laughs> the, the whole nine yards. Um, but I'll educate you. It, it uh -huh. comes from like World War II or either Vietnam pilots, basically fighter pilots. You know, they had the, the bullets that went through the, the propellers in the front. Well, that strip of, of bullets is nine yards. And so they oh, would wow. say, I gave them the whole nine yards, you know, when oh, they fired okay. on the enemy. That's where it came from. Okay, true point. Uh, <laughs> well, something new every day <laughs> so being a veteran i guess i kind of know that stuff and was interested in that stuff but i mean there's a lot of things that are just in our dna that's in our personalities that we're just going to do and say mm -hmm. and it's just either you accept that that's who you are and that's it and that's that brings me to another point monty because so many times people may watch someone on youtube or or television or whatever a newscaster and they're like you know what i want to i want to be like that that's the kind of show i want to have well you can't have that kind of show oprah already made her show right so you can't be oprah no one can beat oprah being oprah and no one can beat monty being monty mm -hmm. there it is an impossible thing for someone to beat you being who you authentically are and it's one of, i think the hardest things to just teach people to trust that mm -hmm. because that is your biggest selling point for anything it is that you do is the authenticity that you bring to this whole craft of content creation. Because if in your mind you're trying to be like, well, I don't sound as good as this, or my camera isn't good as this person or, or whatever, none of that amounts to a hill of beans when it comes to you being authentically who it is that you are yeah. with yeah. whatever gear or camera or whatever it is that you have. No one can beat you doing that flat yeah. out yeah that's so true 
Um, if you guys have, I uh, did it again. Look, I did it again. Y'all didn't even know. So I, I it again. <laughs> if y'all have questions for Earl, make sure y'all put those in the comments. Um, jump and do some Q and A before we get into the rapid fire tech, because I like to geek out on the tech. Because I think, I think me and Earl are using a lot of the same stuff, so that must mean it's good. Uh, you definitely <laughs> got to follow him on uh, Facebook to see what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Earl's video on Facebook. I don't know if you streaming at like 8K <laughs> on Facebook. But I'm like, I can't get my video to look that good. No, it's um, usually 4K. I'm streaming. It's 4K. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I stream at 1080p. Amazon restricts me, so it's kind of difficult oh, to go okay. 4K over there and then. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's streaming at 4K quality, y'all. This guy here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nikki says she never knew that. Monica says, "Speak the truth, Earl." Y'all don't, y'all, y'all got, yeah. I think they like you, Earl. Thank you guys. Oh uh, well, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give him a little shout out right here. A little shout out from the roadcaster. <laughs> uh, 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 he's teasing y'all with this equipment. He's teasing y'all with this equipment. Uh, if y'all have questions for Earl, put it in the chat. We're talking about why every entrepreneur <laughs> needs to create video content. You need to create more video content and more video content. And more video content and more video content and more okay. video content <laughs> and more like I, I sometimes I get um, I get on the like the YouTube train and I'll be a viewer or mm -hmm. I'll jump in Clubhouse and I'll be a listener and I'm constantly reminding myself I need to be the one that people are listening to I need to be the one people are watching and not get stuck as the consumer all the time and so when okay. I find myself in those moments I literally will jump over I'm like okay it's time to hit the record button and it's time to jump up on the the clubhouse stage so um i think you froze again let me see Are you still there earl i think your video froze on me okay yeah i think earl's video froze so i'm gonna let him come back here in a second as earl's gonna come back in here make sure you put your questions in the chat I love technical issues. Don't y'all love technical issues when they just, he might be in that storm right there. Okay, he's back. You got the storm going on down there, Earl? I know, I think it was. Okay. okay. I'll just blame it on me. I'll, I'll take the blame over here. Let me bring you back on screen over here. Sometimes it's like, I'll take the blame. Um, We had we had snow out in like West Virginia, like in the hills out in West Virginia a little earlier today. It's Oh wow! Like it, it's April. <laughs> it was chilly. It was chilly um, down here in North Carolina. It was like just below sixty, which was kind of chilly for this time of year. But that's why I got this little, you know, sweater on or whatever. Uh huh. I'm looking at the chat here. Nikki says I have the problem. I, I'm quick to listen and forget to be the teacher. Uh, mm. Carmelita says I do far too much consuming. Yeah, we, we got to be the content creators, y'all. We got to exactly. be the content creators. I, one of the things I was sharing with someone is there's a certain point where you know the information in your industry. Like, you already know it. It's just like you're just listening to be listening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, sometimes I think about, like, just social media marketing. Like, yeah, you got to post three times a day. And, you know, you got to create a <laughs> post in the morning and the midday and afternoon. I'm like, how many times are you going to listen to the same conversation? Like, you already the know. Same one. Yeah, you don't already listen to this. Or you it comes down to, to execution. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna execute or you're not. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like, just go do it and and just get. I love behind the scenes. I don't, I'm gonna switch gears real quick. I, I was waiting on y'all to ask questions, so I'm gonna ask my own. I like behind the scenes, um, Earl, because uh -huh. it allows me to kind of get a different perspective into what someone is doing on video. So I'll see, you know, the front facing video of them talking about whatever it is that they do. But mm -hmm. I also love when they turn the camera lens, like physical behind the scenes sometimes. And you did a behind oh, wow. the scenes shot a little earlier because okay. I am I gravitate towards tech. So if you want to get my attention, like anybody wants to get my attention, if I see the tech stand out, that's what actually gets my attention. So I mentioned your quality, but you did behind the scenes. I was like, oh, what does he have over there? What is he using over there? Like, I'm all up in oh, it. Okay, because like that, this here. Yeah, because that's just kind of my thing. Can you kind of talk about different ways to use video versus like your traditional, I'm going to point the camera at me and just record? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you mentioned voiceover too. So like, what are some different ways we can use video as entrepreneurs versus the standard quo i guess 
Well, video, depending on like what it is you're using. So this is like another camera angle, right? So depending on what it is that you're doing, I know you do like product reviews. I, from time to time, do product reviews. So you want those different angles sometimes just to kind of show what it is that you got going on, what it is that you're using um, or displaying, right? And then as a as an entrepreneur, it's like some. Sometimes you can switch the whole thing up, right? And just all of a sudden be sharing your screen like this and be teaching something, right? Going through a going through a webinar or or whatever it is. But whatever it is that you're doing with with video is one of those things that oh now I can't switch my scene back. There we go. Whatever it is that you're doing with video, especially from a teaching perspective. When you can show things, and I kind of liken it to sometimes with kids, right? You got some shiny things over here. You got some colors over here. Just switching the screen. And you as a video producer know you want to have that screen moving from time to time. Mm -hmm. You don't just want to stay there because sometimes when you move something or like sometimes when you saw I did on purpose, I like put my camera up there and you can see it in focus. Just having things switch out sometimes keeps that attention going. Oh, mm -hmm. that's something new. Mm -hmm. That's something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That's right. That's one of the things I used early on was how do I get someone's attention with video and not just have the one shot? And so I, I started with the mm -hmm. webcam, Earl. I had the C920 Logitech webcam, and that was my main oh, shot. I still got mine. You still got mine? I still got mine. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would go mine. buy another one just to show people what it looked like, but they cost too much these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, then I bought a second webcam just to have a different angle just to angle. switch things up where people they could see mm -hmm. it but they was like oh something something happened something changed even if they yeah, didn't it re engages it, it re-engages them into what it is that you're doing a lot of times mm -hmm. what just the movement on a screen it could be something as simple as you holding up a pepsi cup and taking a sip it's something new mm -hmm. right that that's in the shop that's yeah. really it I was looking for my vitamin water here, but I, I don't see my vitamin water. I didn't grab it before I got started. I always have it showed up here on the video cameras. <laughs> uh, uh, Carmelita said Earl's GQ angle. <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love the camera angles. I love switching up. Even like Instagram reels, when people show mm -hmm. up on reels and they're doing something in different scenes. Uh, it just mm -hmm. grab, grabs your attention, you know, something that just makes you stand out a little bit more, especially like. Well, that's why th that's why the reels and even like TikTok are are getting so big is because it just keeps engaging and reengaging the person. They, I mean, let's just be honest. I've sat on TikTok for two hours scrolling and didn't realize that I was doing it. Mm. Right? Were you the it, content creator like, Earl or were you the viewer? No, I was the consumer. You're I was the consumer. a consumer sitting there watching folks like like Grant Cardone and um um russell brunson and you know a lot of the the big guys that are out there just consuming mm -hmm. just consuming but it was just engaging to me i wouldn't have sat for two hours on youtube mm -hmm. to, you know to what but because it's real short clips yeah and you can get a lot of information don't don't slip on the short clip information mm. just don't because uh -oh. people will consume that that Go into that real quick, Earl, if you can, because mm -hmm. I think that's big because some people aren't going to create long form content. It's too hard. Right. But right. You got to create a short form, a long form. So if you can't create long form, let's talk short form. It is unbelievable how much content you can fit into one minute, into 60 seconds. That is hard hitting and powerful. And a lot of times, especially when you're producing videos or especially like on live stream, you're hanging out talking or whatever it is. But you can strip out so many things to boil it down to okay what is the main point i want to get across just just that what is the point that i want to get across right it's like if i were trying to explain to someone how to come or go through a stop a stoplight it's like as you're approaching the stoplight you just want to slow down because if it's yellow you definitely want to slow down even more because it's about to go to red and then you just sit there and when it goes to green you take off that's the video mm -hmm. explaining how a stop sign works mm -hmm. or stoplight works and a lot of the things that you can explain to your audience in regards to the problems that they're having and the solutions that you provide can be boiled down to 60 seconds and then you can go on like a, a is a real 60 seconds or are they longer now? I know TikTok has gone to three minutes mm -hmm. where you can make a video up to three minutes. And just because it's on TikTok doesn't mean people are dancing. I, I'm on TikTok. I'm not dancing. Mm -hmm. I'm giving information. 
That's mm -hmm. it. I'm just giving information. I might have some words on the screen, you know, coming up as I speak. There's a bunch of apps you can use for different things like that. That'll enhance that. Obviously, on TikTok, you can add music, make it softer so your voice is above it. But that short form content is really going big right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, like you said, next thing you know, you don't watch two hours of it. And it's like 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 and exactly. it starts to add up, right? Mm -hmm. Um good to see you guys here. I uh love outreach that so don't have any questions at the moment, but your info is priceless. All right, good, good. We're doing what we were supposed to do today, serving the people. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So serving yeah. the people. So that means we answering your questions before you put it in there. That's what I'm going to go off of. Uh um, right. Ramonica says, I have 10 minute TikTok access. Oh, okay. She big time now. I was like, I'm telling y'all, she, she, oh she my. Little, I'm telling y'all, Ramonica, I got to get you back on the show again. I had you on Whoa, earlier. She got to talk about you. that. I ain't even realized you could do 10 minute TikTok. Yeah, I don't have to get you back over here to talk TikToks and stuff over here. Um, let's see here. Let's talk. We got about 10 minutes left, or five. Ooh, I started a little late. So we've got mm -hmm. about 10 minutes left. Um, I want to talk about tech because uh, I'm, a, I'm a techie like you. So, uh, mm -hmm. let's talk tech. You put a couple items in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, uh, questionnaire. And one of them is that microphone that you're using. Tell me about the microphone, what you're using. I mean, that's the same one you got, man. It, is it? Oh, it, it, SM7B? it, it, yeah, it, it is. SM7B? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. We know what SM7B when we see it. It, it. No, it is. I mean, this is, I mean, the Shure SM7B is just one of those, quintessential microphones that you see so many content creators having. Um, it was big in the voiceover industry as well, and then went over into radio and things like that. So it has a lot of crossover potential, but obviously, you know, if you have an ear to hear, you can hear the sound quality that comes from it, right? You know, I know Monty has on a pair of, um, are those Bluetooth or, is, or are those no, wired? They're, they're actually wired, yep, I'll run down the back. They're wired. Okay, yeah, and then I've got the, you know, the over-the-ear ones, which I love. Um, as well. And so if you wear those, especially while you're creating content or on a live stream show, you just get a better feel for what's going on. But no, I love my Shure SM7B. It's been in my shot for almost a year now. I've gone through several different iterations of microphones, and I believe I've settled on this since this has been the one that's just stayed with me for so long, mm -hmm. you know, with that. But yeah, I love the Shure, the Shure products. I even have an MV7. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've got, uh, yeah, the MV7. Earl over there trying to show off, y'all. Hold on. He, Got I can't too. let Earl. No, I ain't showing that. off. I ain't showing off. No, I ain't doing that. It's something about these sure microphones, y'all. Oh if, yeah, you if, got if, to. If, <laughs> if, if, if you sit at if you sit at a desk and you really want to level up, go get the sure microphones. Uh, check those yeah, out. That MV7 is really almost on par with yeah. with this. The MV7, it's almost indistinct. It probably is indistinguishable to most people. Yeah. And then that software that comes with it as well just makes yeah. it sound even better yeah and, and you know having having the ability to do simple usb uh usb those or non techy XLR. people yeah i mean yeah hey you can't beat it just plug it right onto your computer no excuses no fancy equipment but if yeah. you do want some extra fancy equipment you got the roadcaster which i just broke down and added to my workflow that daggone roadcaster earl how long have you had yours about a year now about a year and yeah what, what made you get the Rodecaster? Like, what is it about this audio device that everybody started talking about out in these live streaming podcast world? What made you invest in that piece of equipment for your content creation? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, being in the audio realm, being a voiceover artist, I've gone through and have yet still a lot of audio interfaces, right? But they couldn't do what I wanted to do from a broadcasting perspective, right? If I want to be a, with the Rodecaster Pro, if I want to be able to bring in some sort of audio from my phone, I can just plug it right into my Rodecaster, get that audio right from my phone. If I want to play a certain piece of music or whatever, if I want to even hop into, we were talking about like hopping into um, Clubhouse and being able to get audio from this microphone mm -hmm. into Clubhouse um, and sound amazing if that's what it is that you want to do. I mean, it's got Bluetooth capabilities. It's USB. It's got four different faders for four different mics. You know, I could take this pretty much anywhere if I wanted to set up even here and have someone else come on with me. I could just plug it up right here and just, just get this thing booming and going. Plus, it records mm -hmm. right on the unit. You, you just use a simple one of those micro. I'm trying to pick one up right here. Um, 
not this, but a micro USB where it's much smaller than this. It's like yep. a little slit. You know, I probably have one inside of, yeah, I do. There's one inside of the Rodecaster right now. Um, so you can record right on there and then transfer that audio, edit that audio um, right on your PC or laptop or whatever um, mm. that you got going on there. Did I sell that good enough for you on Amazon? I, I, right I, there? Yeah, I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> I think you did. It's, it's a powerful device. You know, it's four different headphone jacks, all of that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, like uh, we're going to Podfest, VidFest. And one of the things we had in our conversation was uh, who's bringing a Rodecaster? Because mm -hmm. it allowed us to sit down and easily create content. Again, yeah. don't feel like you guys have to go out and get this stuff. But if you want to mm -hmm. speed up your workflow and kind of yeah. yeah. multiply your efforts with technology, the Rodecaster is one of the things that allow you to do it because. I mean, you stand out on audio apps, whatever you decide to do. Your, your podcast is literally yeah. like a click of a button. You got good microphones coming. To, like you're forced to get a good microphone if you use the Rodecaster. So oh, you're, yeah, you're most going definitely. to have a good sound you, podcast. You There's no question about that. Um, and then you can use it during your live stream. Play me a sound effect, girl. I know you got something over there. I don't know. About oh, I got, I mean, I got my air horn, you know, I got my music. That's one of my intros. Okay, um, Earl. Some laughing cheering hold on and you can control that with the fader you can control that volume it, it, and it bring it it brings another dynamic to the video like mm -hmm. if you're if you're if you're on a born live stream and somebody wakes you back up with some with some beats or you know they got some pre-roll ads a buddy of mine or i don't know if billy's still here or not but billy does his podcast and he has his pre-roll ad like built into the button and i'm just like Man. oh yeah you get and you've got I mean, it's got the the buttons, but show yours, man, and I can explain. Show yours because yeah. it's got the buttons off to the side, but you have more than just the eight buttons. You can make a whole nother row of eight, and have and have actually you can make I think up to four different rows of eight that you can have right there. So you're not just limited to the buttons that are on the screen there. Yeah, I, I I can't wait to really like dive in and play with this thing even more, you know, because the reason I oh, got it, it, it can get funky. Yeah, it's to speed up my content creation. Um, yeah, because I need to record and not move stuff around so much and run everything over here into my my ATEM device. So I was like, if I have all mm -hmm. my audio into one place, I can record, have my backup, and I can really get out a lot of content um, faster. Right. So, yeah. And then last piece of equipment, Earl, is that crispy camera you got. Now, I'm, I'm kind of, I almost don't even want to talk about it because I can't even go buy it right now. It, yeah, I can't find it on Amazon. I can't you find can. it on B&H. can't find it nowhere, Earl. But what, what camera are you using? Everybody bought them up. It's the um, Sony ZV-E10. I've, I've got two of them. Uh, we've got this one here um, with, I think, a 50 millimeter lens. And then we've got another Sony ZV-E10. It's got the uh, Sigma 16 uh, millimeter lens um, over there. And, you know, the behind camera is a Lumix G7 is that one right there. <laughs> Romonica said, hey, Alexa, please play. I'm on a new level. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Uh, it, you know, when you when you when it's time to upgrade, there are different mm. there are certain devices that are definitely make you stand out in the marketplace um audio visual lighting you know those and then what i like about the equipment that we that we kind of talked about earl is like it's long lasting like you don't have to go out and go get another oh, yeah. microphone next year like no. it, it's just not gonna go no. shopping every single year buying a camera to up like there's only but so much better resolution you can get and then once you're there yeah right right it, i mean that's why like you, you the phone right now y'all if you can't create content with this you're not gonna create content with anything that we just named off you're just gonna have it sitting there yeah. collecting dust and you don't want it to collect dust um earl as we wrap up i appreciate you for being here uh i always have people uh let us know what you got going on uh where they can find you and then i got one more question for you so let people know what you got going on i got all the things sure. tagged into youtube for those that are watching on youtube but i'll let earl say it in his own words as well Oh, sure. You can find me at the website. It's just EarlHallStudio.com. Uh, the YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash EarlHallStudio. You know, at the website, I can, you know, you can get links to a couple of different uh, apps and tools that I use that are very inexpensive to use for content creators, whether it's creating video, whether it's creating images or the whole nine yards. Right. So <laughs> see, I got that in there, the whole nine yards. 
And then also like, if you want to book an appointment with me, you can do that uh, right from the website or hallstudio.com. And we can talk about your content creation. We can develop a business plan for you. Not I, I hate using the word business plan, but actual strategy of what it is that you want to accomplish. And let's just kind of walk through that and we can come out with a strategy on the other end. Awesome. Awesome. Appreciate y'all uh, for being here. So make sure you check out Earl. If you have some questions, you need to dive deeper into it, reach out to Earl mm -hmm. um, and, and, and get it done. I need y'all to create more video content, especially yes, especially y'all that have followed me for a while. I need you to create more, even more, myself included. I'm talking to myself, you know, preaching to my own self. There we I go. need to create more content because like literally, and, and those of you all in my Blueprint Influencers community, y'all know like you can sell your content you can create the content and like literally sell it to a brand because the companies, mm -hmm. they need content. So if you're using these products and services every day, uh, one of the things I'm not nah, going to tell, you, but one of the things I'm working on is to create more content for a couple different companies because they're not creating social media content. They need videos. OK, mm -hmm. I can create a video for you and it'll look good, too. I'm going to use yeah. I'm going to use the camera that Earl said. I'm going to use a microphone <laughs> to make the audio voiceover sound good and I will sell it. I'm going to sell content to companies. So if y'all are in that community, then you already know what I'm talking about over there. Earl, as we wrap up, we're in April, 2022. Mm -hmm. Leave the people with a, a, a thought, an idea, encouragement, even a kick in the butt on how and why they need to really dive into creating more video content this year. If you're a business owner and you're not creating content, there is something definitely wrong. Now, l let's just go a little bit deeper on this, because if you're creating content, we've been talking about video content. But let's just be real, Monty. Not everybody can do this. Not everybody can do this. We say that everybody can, but not everybody is. But there's, specific, there's some specific reasons why. Some people are better at written content. They just are, right? They, they have that skill set. And if that is your skill set, you need to dive into that. But don't go diving into creating written content just because you're scared of creating video content. Mm -hmm. That video content is, and this is why it's king. Because from a video content that I create, let's just say I do a 10 minute thing on whatever and create a video on that. From that 10 minute video, I can create a blog post by transcribing that video. So that's two pieces of content. I can chop that. 10 minute piece up into different segments of videos that may be hard hitting and post that on social media. That may be three to five, maybe six pieces of content. And even from that, I can take one minute clips, probably about at least five of them and or four of them and just create 10 pieces of content from creating video. Video helps you create everything, even an image. You can create still shots, put words over the images. Video gives you literally everything that you would create. So go create some videos. Earl gave y'all a masterclass in about 90 seconds, probably even shorter <laughs> than that. And like everything he just said was a clip he can transcribe out and like put it exactly. on Instagram and it'll have the same effect on those other platforms. Like, oh, that is a good idea. I can go do that. So mm -hmm. make sure, and it's like literally, I love doing stuff in real time. Literally, Earl was on video giving information about how to accomplish a goal and he could take that same video and now put it on all these different platforms because of the way he said it like learning the strategy of how to talk on video is a whole nother thing too yeah, um that is yeah <laughs> i appreciate y'all for being here appreciate my guest earl for being here for taking the time to jump on here and hang out with y'all answer some questions and, and be a part of our community over here those of you all watching live, I see all of y'all appreciate y'all for being here on a weekly basis. Next week, we got an awesome show. I got, um, no, I, I ain't gonna tell. She's a, she's a powerhouse. I met her on Periscope. <laughs> she is a powerhouse. So if you guys, um, I'm gonna definitely talk about her story because she's leveled up her video. and It's come a long way um, since I, I met her on that app. But you guys enjoy the rest of your evening, create more video, and I look forward to seeing it as well. Make sure you guys reach out to me if you have questions. Ahmed, I, I gave you my email address so you can get that uh, that credit card number over there. Y'all reach out yeah. to Earl. His website is linked into the YouTube subscription. And with that, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next Thanks, week. Thanks, guys. Peace.